In this tip, I'm going to show you how to use a set action to drill down into the underlying data behind a mark. Let's look at an example. In this example, you'll see we have the average sales for each category represented as a blue dot. We then have these reference bands that represent the distribution of every single sale inside of each of those categories. When I click on one of these dots, I can now see each of the underlying, underlying sales within that category. I can click the dot again and they go away. I can repeat that for technology if I wanted to, and I can see the distribution of all of the sales within technology. The first thing we want to do is we want, we want to build a simple chart that has category in the columns and average sales on the rows. I'm going to change my mark type to a circle and I'm going to go ahead and turn the labels on. These labels I'm going to put uh, at the, uh, the center and underneath. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to create a set based on category. So I'm going to right click on category, create set. I'll just leave it called category set and for this example I'm just going to go ahead and pick furniture. Now what I want to do is I need to get the sales for the category that I selected. So I'm going to create a new calculated field. So let's call this category set sales. And I'm going to say if category set, then sales, end. Very simple calculation that says if you're in the category that was selected, then choose, then return the sales. I'm going to make that a dual access chart and synchronize. And you can see we have the total sales here for the category set, but on this particular uh, shelf, I actually want this to show every individual sale. So I'm going to drag row ID to the detail shelf, and now you can see we have these dots for each individual, uh, each individual item that was sold. On my, on my color shelf, I'm going to go ahead and set my colors to be a light blue for the average sales and a red for the category set sales. So now that we have this built, we want to go ahead and add a reference band that shows a distribution of the sales for the category that's selected. In order to do that though, I need to put sales on the detail shelf for my category set. I'm going to go to the analytics pane, drag on a reference band for the table for the category set sales. I want to do it for each cell, and I want to go from the minimum sales to the maximum sales. I'm going to turn off my labels and my tooltips. I'm going to give it a nice, a nice dark line so I can see them pretty well, and maybe I'll make it a slightly lighter color and turn off the recalculate. And there we go. We now have our nice little distribution, uh, sorry, our nice little reference bands in the view. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hide this axis on the right hand side because we no longer need that. From here, I'm going to go ahead and add my set action to update the category set. So let's go up to worksheet and actions. Let's add a change set values action. And I'm going to call this update category set. I'm going to run it on select. The, my, uh, my target set is going to be my category set. And when I click off of it, I want to remove all values. In other words, I want to get rid of all of those red dots. So let's hit OK and hit OK again. And now when I click on office supplies, I can see all the red circles for office supplies. Click off of it, and now I don't see them anymore. But now the problem is when I click on one of them, everything else gets grayed out. So we can fix that with a little highlighting trick. So I'm going to create a new calculated field, and I'm going to call it dehighlight. And I'm just going to put the word in here. I'll just put my name in there. I'm going to go to the All Marks card and drag that to the Detail Shelf. Now I can go up to Worksheet Actions, and this time I'm going to add a Highlight action. So I'm going to call this Remove Highlight. I'm going to do it on Select. My target sheet is Sheet 1, and in the selected fields, I want to choose the D Highlight object. So let's hit OK, hit OK again, 
And now when I click on one, you can see everything is now visible. I click off and it goes away. I do have this greater than 10,000k nulls indicator, but that's because my category set doesn't always return values. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that. Now maybe I'll also make the chart a bit wider so we can see it a bit better. I'm going to do some manual adjusting of the, of the circles, the size of the circles. So maybe I'll shrink these down a bit for the blue. And the red ones I'm going to make pretty small. Okay, maybe something like that. We can play around with it and we get something. Great. But now, um, one of the problems is we can no longer see the distribution of all of these, uh, or it's more difficult to see the distribution of all of these red, red circles. So I'd like to know kind of where are they packed together a bit more. So what I'm going to do is in my column shelf, I'm going to double click and I'm going to type in average and then a bracket and the word random. Okay, and what this does is it assigns a random number between 1 and 0 to each of the marks in the view. And notice how it became really wide. And let me show you what happens now. If I click on this mark, I could see all of the underlying marks. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead and set my axis because everything goes from 0 to 1. I'm going to go ahead and fix my axis to maybe start at minus 0.25, and I'm going to end it at 1.25. Let's close that. And now when I click on the mark, you can see they're all spread out nice and neat. Okay, I need to fix a few things here. So my average size shrunk down. So let me go ahead and make that a bit bigger again. And now if we click on one of the marks, we can see the underlying marks underneath of it. But some of these have um, are, are showing value. So I need to go to my second shelf here. I'm gonna turn off the labels. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong shelf. I want to go to the category set shelf, turn off my labels. Again, I can test it and see that all the marks show up properly. All right, so the last thing we need to do is we need to do a bit of cleanup. First thing is I'm going to hide the header from my axis, and I'm going to remove that field from the tooltip. I'm going to hide the field label from my columns, and then I'm going to format the view to, I'm going to turn my grid lines, uh, turn my grid lines off, turn my zero lines off, and in my uh, in my borders, I'm going to go ahead and turn my row dividers off. But in my column dividers, uh, so I don't like how these kind of run right up next to each other. So I'm going to set my column divider to really thick, as thick as it'll go, and then white. And now it looks like the sections get broken up a bit more. All right, so now I'm just going to shrink the view up a bit, click on one of my marks, and now I can see the underlying marks in my data set. Okay, and there you have it. So I hope you found that useful. Have a great day.